Hey guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about subject, purpose, and audience. These are three things that you're going to have to discuss in your upcoming They Say paper, so it's important that we understand them really well. So let's dive right in. When you read a text, maybe you've read Shakespeare, maybe you've read some novels, maybe you've read articles uh, as you've been doing your research or you're reading your biology book or whatever, a lot of times it feels like this text has just appeared out of thin air. It's hard to imagine that it was actually written by some human being, but everything that's ever been written was. At some point, some man or woman sat down, hunched over a pen and paper, a typewriter, a computer, and pounded out these words. It came from their brain. It came from their fingers. So those people had to think about some stuff before they actually sat down to write about it. These are the things that I like to call author's considerations, and they are one of the rhetorical triangles that we're going to talk about this semester. I like to think in terms of rhetorical triangles because they help us remember the key things that you need to keep in mind as you're writing, particularly an argumentative type of paper. So the first rhetorical uh, triangle is these author's considerations, and these are subject, purpose, and audience. We're going to focus on those three things today. Fortunately, they're pretty straightforward. They basically are exactly what you think they are. When we talk about subject, it's basically what it is that you're writing about. But there's a couple of questions you need to ask yourself. First one is, what do I already know about this subject? And the second is, what do I need to know about this subject in order to write the paper that I'm trying to write? If you're writing about something that you're already an expert in, say you were a cheerleader in high school, and you're going to be writing an argument in which you try and convince the school uh, that cheerleading should be considered a varsity sport. Well, maybe you've got enough experience in cheerleading and enough experience with cheerleading competitions that you can write about this particular subject doing very little research. Now, on the other hand, if you're writing about nuclear physics or something really complicated, chances are that you don't know that much about that topic. So you're going to need to actually do some research before you can write about it. Now, if you don't have to write a very complex nuclear physics paper, maybe you don't have to do that much research. That's why you got to keep in mind, what do I need to know? If the paper's not in that much depth, you don't need to know as much as if the paper's in a lot of depth. So think about the subject, what do I already know, what do I need to know, and research accordingly. Second is purpose. It's why you're writing to begin with. People usually don't just sit down and write uh, for no reason at all. They have some reason to put in this effort into producing some sort of written work. Now, there's lots of reasons they might do this. They might be writing to inform. That's usually what goes on with the newspaper. They tell you who won the election or who won the baseball game. You write to entertain, like the Harry Potter books or the Twilight books are there to, because they're fun to read. To communicate. You guys write all the time when you text, when you tweet, when you post on people's Facebooks. That's all a means of communication. When you document, you take notes. That's another reason that people might write. And one of the most common ones that we see is writing to persuade. We see it all the time because every commercial was written to persuade you to do something, usually to buy something, although sometimes they're uh, creating a commercial to convince you to do something, uh, like vote for a particular person or whatever. But persuasive writing is very common and very important because that's what argumentative writing is. That's what you're going to be looking at as you write your they say paper. How is this person trying to persuade me of something? Now, when you're thinking about <coughs> persuasive writing, you need to think slightly deeper. What exactly are they trying to persuade me of? Are they trying to persuade me to buy a Budweiser? Are they trying to persuade me to vote for Donald Trump? Are they trying to persuade me to build a wall between America and Mexico? Whatever it is that they're trying to persuade you of, you make sure that you have that in mind so that you can say whether or not they've actually accomplished this purpose. Did you go out and buy a Budweiser after you watched the commercial? If so, they must have been successful. Last is audience. It's key to think about who is actually being targeted by this particular piece of persuasive writing, because that will help you understand whether or not it's effective. Now, there's lots of different ways you can break down an audience. Gender, are they men or women or both. Age, are you targeting children? Are you targeting high school age people? Are you targeting old people? Think about how differently you talk to your grandparents than you talk to your friends. Education level. If you're talking to people who did not finish high school versus if you're talking to people who all have PhDs, you can make different assumptions about what they know about different topics. Income level, 
Different people are going to be swayed by different types of arguments based on their level of income. People who are very, very rich have different values sometimes than people who are very, very poor. So you've got to keep that in mind as you're trying to persuade people. Different areas of the country or areas of the world have different values as well. So knowing whether you're writing to somebody who lives in South Carolina or somebody who lives in Somalia is going to help you decide whether or not uh, you're going to be able to persuade them. Race, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or whatever, again, you come from a different background, you have a different culture, you may have different values. This has to be kept in mind as you're trying to persuade them. And of course, religion is important too. People of different religions have different things that are important to them, and people who are not religious at all are not going to be persuaded by religious arguments. So knowing the general religious background of an audience helps you decide how you want to try and convince them to be on your side. Now, if you want an example of how big a difference audience can make, think about the audiences of rap music versus country music. Now, I know that everybody listens to rap and everybody listens to country, but in general, we think of the audience of rap music as being more African-American, younger, urban. When we think of country music, we think of it as being more white, often older, often living in the country. Again, I know that plenty of white people listen to rap, plenty of African-American people listen to country, but you get the point. We can generalize about audiences when we're trying to persuade people. Read the Denise Snow article called Parallel Worlds. What she actually finds is that rap and country music have a lot more in common than you would think because they seem like totally different genres. They're actually very similar. She wrote that article quite a while ago, so she's focusing on more old school rappers like uh, Snoop Dogg or Ice-T or somebody like that. But we can see it with modern rappers today, modern country singers. I like to, when I teach this in class, use a song from Drake called Best I Ever Had and a song by Brad Paisley called, uh, I think it's called She's Everything to Me. I would suggest that you look these two up on YouTube and listen to each of them and think a little bit about how similar they are. I'll show you just a few examples. Brad Paisley sings in his song, She's Everything I Ever Wanted and Everything I Need. Drake raps, She's Everything I Wanted and Everything I Need. Here they say literally the exact same thing. Drake is rapping, Brad Paisley singing a country song, but they're getting the exact same message across because they have the same purpose. They're trying to tell this woman how much she means to him. Now, we begin to see a little bit of differences in the song that can be explained because of how different the audiences are. Brad Paisley says she's a yellow pair of running shoes, a holy pair of jeans, she looks great in cheap sunglasses, she looks great in anything. Drake says sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on, that's when you're the prettiest, I hope that you don't take it wrong. Now, they're dressing different women and thinking about their different audiences. Drake's makes much more sense for a rap song while Brad Paisley's fits more with a country audience. When we get to the end, we can truly see the difference between audiences. She's a bubble bath and candles, baby come and kiss me, Brad Paisley. That's very beating around the bush, but we know what's getting ready to happen, right? She's in the bubble bath, baby come and kiss me. They may tiptoe around it, but we know what the message is here. Drake does not tiptoe around it. Get it from the back and make your fucking bra strap pop. Drake gets right to the point because rap audiences have different expectations than country audiences. Now, if you imagine each one trying to accomplish his purpose without keeping his audience in mind, imagine if Brad Paisley got on stage and sang some of Drake's lyrics, or vice versa, if Drake got on stage and sang a country song with Brad Paisley's lyrics. Their audiences would be very disappointed. Even though they're getting the same purpose accomplished, they do it very differently because they have different audiences. So you need to think about how your author is targeting a particular audience when you decide whether that author is accomplishing his goals or not. Later, when you write your proposal, you'll need to keep in mind who your audience is to decide how you want to go about trying to persuade them. The other thing to keep in mind is context. We talked briefly about this when I talked about the they say assignment. But you need to think about when the article was written and where in the world it was. If you're talking about uh, Facebook in 2005, when it was just starting to get around, only college students were involved, it's very, very different than if you're talking about it in 2017 when like everyone has a Facebook. So if you read an article from 2005 but don't know that it's from back then, 
it's not going to make sense. You have to make sure to establish context early on. Same thing with where in the world. We have different expectations in South Carolina about many, many issues than people do in California or New York, and certainly than people do in Brazil or Tanzania or China. Different places in the world have different uh, expectations, different values. Knowing where something was written is a key to understanding it. So don't forget to talk about context early in your paper and then talk about subject, purpose, and audience to set everything up contextually so that we can understand how that author is making his argument. That's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, just send me an email.